In this video, I'll show you how to tear down a Stepper SDA100 controller. I'll show you how to take it apart, remove all of the internal components, and how to reassemble it. Uh, the reason you might need to do this is if you're attempting to replace a driver chip, uh, replace a driver board, maybe you're trying to install an optional uh, board like the transceiver interface or relay. Uh, in, in either case, if you're attempting to do a repair of your controller, uh, it's good to know how to take it apart and put it back together. So this video is going to show you how to do that for the SDA 100 controller. Uh, if you've got a optimizer controller, check out our other video on that. So the tools you're going to need for the job are a Phillips screwdriver. You need one with a, a very long, thin handle. Um, this, you'll see why later, but you definitely need something that has, you know, at least this is 150 millimeters of length and it's a pretty small uh, screwdriver. So you'll need something of this nature uh, if you're going to be replacing the display board. If you're just going to replace the driver board or driver chips, uh, you won't need it. But you'll see later on where this comes into play. Uh, you'll also need a flathead screwdriver and a 3 16 nut driver. You can also use a crescent wrench, but if you have a 3 16 nut driver, it's a lot easier. Okay, so let's start by removing the cover from the controller. There's four Phillips uh, 440 screws, two here and two on this face. So I'll remove those with my Phillips screwdriver. All right, with the cover off, I can see inside of the controller. So you'll notice a couple of things. I've got a transceiver interface board installed I've got a relay board installed. I've got the driver board here. This is an ALP uh, five driver board. You can tell it's ALP because of these relays right here. And you'll see that there's five driver chip modules installed. So U5, U6, U7, U8, and U9. So five in a row right here. This is the newer ALP uh, driver chip module board. So I'll show you later on how to do the same steps if you have the older socket mount driver chip version. Uh, and additionally, you'll have the display board here with uh, an LCD module. All right, so I'm gonna start by undoing the jack screws on the back of the controller. There's four jack screws for the transceiver interface and two for the driver board. All right, so I've removed the jack screws. The next step is going to be to remove the two uh, countersunk Phillips screws from the driver board. There's one here and there's one here. All right, so with those two screws removed, um, we should be able to remove the driver board from the controller. Uh, some driver boards in the past, we used to have a third uh, countersunk screw uh, right over here. So you might have to also remove a countersunk screw from here. So definitely check that um, if, it's, if the board's not coming out for some reason. Um, so we're also going to want to undo this ribbon cable that connects the display board and driver board. So you can just pull out, pull like straight up and out, and that ribbon cable will come off. And then we can just lift our driver board up and out of the controller. Let's set this aside. Okay, so here's our driver board. And let's start by removing the option boards. So I'll just pull the transceiver interface straight up and off. So now I could replace that with a new one if I needed to. And then I'm going to remove the relay board. So I'll, there's a single 440 pan screw here. In the center that I'll need to unscrew. And then I can lift the relay board straight up and off. There's two headers it's connected to, one right here and one right here. I'll just lift straight up and out. And there's my relay board. All right, now replacing the driver chip modules is super easy if you have the newer driver chip module board. You just uh, pull straight up and the 
chip will come straight off of the two headers on the board. So I can pull out a driver chip module. I can install a new one the same way. They're all totally interchangeable. So if I, if I needed to, I could swap driver chip modules around like this. Just make sure that when you're installing them, you're getting them um, so that the pins are lined up. So you don't want to, you don't want to plug it in like this where they're, you know, off. You want to make sure that they're, they're all lined up. So that's how you install uh, or replace driver chip modules. All right, so this is the driver chip uh, module board. Now I'm going to show you, you might also have a, um, just a socket mount driver chip board. So this is a little bit different. Um, this is the older version of the board that we used to sell. Uh, and so if you have this version, you'll need to get these socket mount driver chips out in a different way. They're, it's not so easy. You can't just pull straight up and out. They're kind of, they're pretty firmly stuck in there. So we'll need to use a tool. So I like to use a flathead screwdriver. Um, you need a pretty thin one that can fit underneath the driver chip here. But you basically want to push it in and lever it up slowly uh, so that you don't bend any of the pins. That's the real danger is, is bending the pins. So if you pull pry up from one side and leave the other side fully inserted, it'll bend the pins at that end. So you kind of want to get this, you know, the flathead all the way under there and as best you can lift straight up and out. All right, so I've removed my driver chip here. Um, see, I did a pretty good job of not bending any of the pins. But if you do bend the pins and you need to straighten them out, you can do that. Just, you know, gently um, push them back into position. Uh, but definitely don't do it too many, too many times or it can, it'll, uh, it'll weaken the pins and eventually they'll break. All right, so that's how you'd remove a driver chip. Uh, one thing to note is that when you go to reinstall the driver chip, there's a little, uh, little notch right here in the top. That needs to face towards the back of the driver board. So when you're going to reinstall that, point that towards the back of the driver board. All right, <clears throat> so that's how you take out a driver chip. And if you want to reinstall it, uh, you just put it back into place. So line up the pins on one side. And I like to line up the pins on the other side. You might need to press a little bit. All right, and if any of the pins are getting stuck and not going in, don't force it. Uh, use it. Use a you know a tool, a tweezers or something to kind of push them back into place so that they're lining up with the little holes. And then once you've got it to this place where it's you know halfway inserted and uh, none of the pins are bent, then you can apply some force to push it in fully so it's fully seated in there. That's what you want. You want it fully seated. You don't want any of the any of the pins to be visible. All right. So that's replacing the driver board. Now let's look at the display board. All right. So there's four screws here holding the display board in place. And this is where the long handled screwdriver is necessary. So if you're just replacing the driver board, you can use any old Phillips screwdriver. But if you're trying to replace the display board, you definitely need a long handled one like this. So the reason for that is that there's these two screws here, which are not really accessible uh, other than through holes in the back of the controller. So there's one hole here and another hole there. So we're going to take our screwdriver, poke it through there. That will allow me to unscrew. All right, so with that, you can take the display board out. <clears throat> now, if you're attempting to replace the LCD module, uh, you can do that pretty straightforward. You just need to start by, um, you can see here this little connector here with a ribbon cable going into it. Well, we need to disconnect the ribbon cable. So to do that, there's these two little plastic, black plastic tabs on either side. You can get under there with your fingernails and push up and you'll feel it click out of the way. And then you'll need to remove the module. And this, this module is uh, usually super glued to the display board. So you'll have to push from the back and it'll pop out. 
And then with that, you can simply slide the ribbon cable out of the connector. And you're good to go. So now you could take a new LCD module and install it. Just uh, push the connector in, or the ribbon cable in to the connector, and then push down on these black tabs. All right, so with the ribbon cable inserted, you can apply some super glue to these tabs here and press your new LCD module into place. All right, so that's the full teardown of the controller. I'm just gonna reverse all my steps to reassemble. There's really no trick to it. You just have to uh, put everything back the way it was. reinstall my transceiver interface the same way I took it out just by pressing it straight down in. With the relay board you'll want to make sure you're aligning the two headers here. A pretty common mistake people make is that they they're off by one so they have it shifted so that it's not not fully plugging into all the pins on the header. So for example you might see something like this you might do something like this where you know it's not not fully on the pins there. You want it to be fully on the header here and this header on the other side, you also want to make sure you're plugged in correctly. All right, so replace the pan screw on the top. Now, when you're going to reinstall the screws, um, at the factory, we use a purple Loctite on the screws, so I recommend doing that if you're reinstalling it just so that they don't wiggle loose in the future. So a trick when you're reinstalling the jack screws on the transceiver interface is to not fully tighten down any of them uh, until, get, get them all loosely in place and then tighten them down. So I'll loosely tighten this one, loosely tighten this one. Same with these two. And then go through and tighten them all down. All right, and that's it. That's how you tear down and reassemble a Stepper SDA100 controller. Thanks for watching.